Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. I'm joined by Dom and a special of Team Liquid who just brought Madison Square Garden to their feet in a victory 3-1 over Team Impulse. Gentlemen, an amazing game, back and forth. They had the lead, you had the lead. That's the way it goes, but you persevered. Dom, how deep did you guys have to dig going into these games to find the victory? Um, I think we just had to play like patient, just wait for them to make mistakes because their early game is really clean. Like Impulse is probably the best early game team in the league. So we needed to wait out their aggression and um, they did a lot of like really smart things. Like they had two TPs that last game. So it just put a lot of pressure on us to really just like not let them get too far ahead of us so that when we did get to team fights, we had summoner advantage and we could just end up like winning the game. And thank you, Dominic. Special, looking back at some of the final games of the LCS, when I, talk, I spoke to you guys, there were some takeaways from the games, things you would work on and practice coming into this week. Were you guys able to flip around everything you wanted, or were there still some things on your mind that could have made this day not go your way? Well, we definitely have stuff to work on. I mean, we lost to TSM last week, and these games weren't the cleanest. We had some, we were behind in a lot of these games. I think we're gonna really take this time this month off. Hopefully we get to Worlds. I mean, we might have played in next week, but regardless, we're gonna work our butts off and just make sure that we can come out strong. I mean, we want to go to Worlds. We want to really represent NA and just show how strong our teams have gone. Maybe we need some work, but hopefully we can get there. Absolutely. Dom, another question for you and then a final one for you, special. Coming into these games, you're known as a very emotional player. And obviously on the stage, the crowd drives you oh so much when those plays happen. How do you keep those emotions under control and just keep your team composed? Well, it's actually kind of funny because in the first game, I expected myself to like, um, be able to carry that momentum through the series because I had the gang top and I ended up mad lifing Apollo So I was feeling really good about that and then literally like one minute later We just got ace the dragon so that that died down real quick. So for me It was mainly just like uh, just try to prepare like it's a five game series Like we don't know um, what they could pull out and just play patiently because if we do let our emotions get the best of us We can make bad decisions and we just wanted to try to play our game and not get sucked into their fast tempo style All right, and a special final question it's been a long road. You've been a part of Team Solo Mid, and now you kind of have to favor Team Solo Mid tomorrow so you guys can make it through that gauntlet. What, how do you think that matchup is going to go? How do you think it's going to play out? I think TSM will win. They've been looking really strong. And I know um, Reggie was rooting for us, and we're rooting for him too. Awesome. Congratulations on the victory, guys. Another fantastic amount of play you guys put out throughout this series in the 3 1 versus Impulse. Now we're going to throw it back to the analyst desk for a bit more on those games. Thank you, Riv. Gentlemen, we get a little bit of time to talk about that crazy finish. The, the series in general being, having so many ups and downs, different yeah. tempos. I mean, everything about <laughs> it was we had some really slow games that weren't bloody at all. Then we had some super bloody games with steals. And I mean, so now that you've had a moment to metabolize everything, Kobe Jatt, since you were on the call, what are your thoughts on that series? Yeah, I mean, it depended heavily um, on Rush, as we thought it was going to depend on, right? Uh, when the team comp called for him to build tanky, uh, whether it was Elise or whether it was Lee Sin, they were unable to find success. So it was all about when he was able to build damage and create opportunities for the team. Even in that last game, they all, they were almost successful in large part due to the advantages that Rush was able to get them. Yeah, and I think a lot of the series actually had to come down to Team Impulse rediscovering their true identity as a team. Because game three, through that pick and ban phase, really showed oh. that's not how they play. I wish that game never would have happened and we would have had a much more entertaining <laughs> series because as soon as they went back to just fully committing to the dive, even though Team Liquid committed heavily to protection and disengage, that was a hell of a game. If it wasn't for Phoenix's Baron Steel, maybe we go to game five anyway. So I really like Team Liquid. They're able to adapt and adjust to what other teams do. And Team Impulse, they just didn't find out what they really wanted to do until too late. Zyrene, you've been hammering pick ban all day. And so I have to imagine you agree here with Jat in that Team Impulse really needs to, when they're looking forward to the gauntlet now, because let's not forget, they still have an opportunity to go to Worlds. That's what they really need to hammer out. Yeah, I really like the adjustments that they were able to make at the end of the day. I liked Gate on the TP Diana to affect bottom lane. And what it came down to was Team Liquid were better at team fighting five on five, but TIP had them in skirmishes on two on twos, on three on threes. They won the majority of those, and that's how they were getting those advantages. But then they stopped playing to that win condition halfway through the game. So if they were able to just have another game after that. If the Baron didn't get stolen, we might have seen them continue to play out that style and we would have had that game five be very hectic. But that's what they have to take away from this is play to your skirmish style. Do not play into the hands of the enemy. Because you know what? Sometimes you have to say they're better than us at this right now. 
let's play around that. And they failed to do that in that last series. Well, on the side of Team Liquid, there were plenty of great individual performances. There was one man, though, who was legendary tonight and claimed our player of the series honors. From Team Liquid, it's Phoenix. His shockwaves were game-changing, including a clutch Baron Steel in Game 4 to close out the series. Yeah, I mean, obviously the shockwave at the end is the one everyone's going to remember, but he had so many reliable shockwaves throughout this entire game, really solidifying Team Liquid's ability to out-team fight Team Impulse. He could protect, he could go aggressive, he was the proper utility mage, and it's a well-earned player of the series. Yeah, I was just talking about how they were winning in team fights. Phoenix was a huge catalyst for that. Game one, large deficit, three-man shockwave to turn it around. Game four, large deficit, same thing happens. Phoenix performing on Orianna. Don't give him that champion. You can't give him a zero. <laughs> what can you give this guy? Yeah, that's true. He's building out his list of must band champions. Now, for more on Phoenix's amazing performance, we're going to send it down to Riv, who's standing by with the man himself. Thank you very much, Dash. I am joined by Sonny and Phoenix. Sonny, thank you for joining us. Also, Phoenix has asked to do this interview in English. Sonny will be here to help if he does require any assistance. Phoenix. You made plays everywhere today, man. Such a fantastic amount of play through the series. What did it feel like to hear your name called in Madison Square Garden when you walked out? Uh, oh, I never play like this big studio, so I was so nervous. But in game, like my team made me made me like more confident. So, like, I feel very good. I feel very good. Uh, I just, I just feel like I can make play anywhere against TIP, and I just kill TIP. Yeah, that you did. You took the win right out of their sails. Throughout these games, even in the loss, what was the team thinking? How are you guys going to come back? Why did you lose? What happened during that game? Uh, second game, cause that time I play stop to me. Honestly. Uh, I never had to win as mid Lulu, but my team wants to pick Lulu, but like they came lose. But like Oriana support mid lane too, but he can make play. So I pick Oriana three games, so I three zero. So you can make plays. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Phoenix, you have done so well in the North American LCS. Do you have anything to say to the fans that have always followed you and backed up your big plays? Uh, can you say it? anything for the fans? Uh, uh, I think my last split, spring spring was uh, really bad, but my fan keeps supporting me. So I think this split, I'm doing pretty well, I think. And so thanks for supporting, and I love, I love my fans. Fantastic, Phoenix. Thank you so much for the interview, man. Fantastic play and amazing Baron Steel. Sonny, thank you so much once again. We're going to throw it back to the analyst desk to break down this amazing day. Thank you, Riv. I love that. They, they, we lost the game. It would have been a 3-0, yeah, except for they put me on me Lulu. I don't like Lulu. <laughs> Why would they do that, right? Got to be able to make plays. plays. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, let's take a look at how our playoff bracket is filling out. Team Liquid has defeated Impulse and claimed third place for another split. That leaves only one big question to be answered. Who will be our summer split champions? Now, in addition to grabbing third, Liquid have banked those 30 extra championship points and could auto-qualify for this year's World Championship if TSM takes first place tomorrow. And we will be bringing you that coverage of our finals tomorrow. Uh, in the Hobbit Arena in Stockholm, Sweden, first where Yellow Star and the rest of Fnatic will attempt to keep their perfect season alive against the newest team in the EU LCS, Origin. Then we'll bring it back here to the Empire State for our North American Finals, a backyard brawl in the garden between the two oldest rivals in League of Legends, Counter Logic Gaming versus TSM. Gentlemen, that is a huge, huge matchup. Preliminary yeah. thoughts, because we'll have some time to discuss tomorrow on this CLG TSM matchup. Yeah, it's a fascinating matchup. I don't think these teams have ever been closer as far as who could take one of these series. We were doing pick and ban for this series. We thought that was very simple in comparison <laughs> to the variations that we could see in CLG TSM because there's a lot of variation in their champion pools and I'm actually not sure what to expect. Yeah, yeah. plus these two teams have been very vocal. They've been practicing against each other this entire playoff series all along the way. So they have so much practice against each other. They know exactly all the strategies that each other have been testing, even the ones they haven't brought out on the stage. Yep.
All right, well, if you're still looking for a place to watch the action tomorrow, Coca-Cola is hosting viewing parties in theaters and cities across North America and Europe. Head over to lolliesports.com and click on the viewing parties link to reserve your spot. That's going to do it for us tonight. We want to extend a special thank you to Madison Square Garden for hosting our final week of playoff action. Now, on behalf of myself and the entire live broadcast crew and our friends at Tribeca Games, thank you for watching, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.